So I got this question the other day. Antonio, a good friend of mine is getting married in a few months and he asked me to help him out with this suit. I'm honored, but there's an issue. He's a slim guy with scoliosis. My first idea was a traditional black suit with a vest and bow tie. But if you have any other suggestions, I'm all ears. War Mr. Guards, Peter. Now, for those of you not familiar with scoliosis, this is where there's a curvature in the spine. The fact that he mentioned this, I assume that it's pretty severe, something that is noticeable. In addition, he's a slim guy. So, you skinny guys know that most clothing is made way too big coming off the rack. So, how is this guy going to look like a million bucks on his important day? Find out, gents, in today's video. Now, if you've watched more than a few of my videos here at Real Men Real Style, you guys know that I am a right-brained guy, that I like to use tools to be able to figure things out to make things easy. So, with that being said, let's go right to the style pyramid. Starting off at the top, we've got the cut. This is going to be the fit of the clothing, how it's going to fit on your particular body and how it's going to complement your build. Next up, we've got the construction of the garment. This is going to be the fabric. This is going to be the build quality. This is all the details, the materials that go into making what you're wearing. And for the base of the pyramid, let's talk about communication. This is the function of the clothing. Is it sending the message you want to send? Is it the right piece of clothing for the job? So, let's start things off talking about fit. And by the way, I know a suit is more than just a jacket and pair of trousers. Of course, you need to have a shirt, you need to have shoes, all those other details that go with it. But I think focusing in on the suit and the fit of that suit is going to be the most important thing because it can be the hardest thing to get right. Now, you've got a few options. You can look at bespoke, you can look at custom, or you can look at off the rack. Now, off the rack has a lot of things going for it. First up is the suit is out there, you can get it quickly. And if you find a skilled tailor, you can actually get this adjusted to fit the body reasonably well. It all starts with what you have to start with because you could walk into a store and if they've got tons of options. You may find something that fits really well and just needs a few minor adjustments. That being said, you can also find off the rack suits incredibly inexpensive. You may have something that was handed down to you. You may have something you can pick up in a thrift store for a few dollars. Or you may go into a box store and find a steal, something made in Italy of high quality for just a couple hundred bucks. So, it sounds like off the rack's the way to go. Not exactly. This gentleman sounds like it's a little bit hard to fit. Besides being slim, he's got that scoliosis. And depending on the severity of that, we may want to look at either made to measure, also known as custom, or bespoke. So, bespoke, this is going to be the complete opposite of off the rack. This is where every single piece is made individually for the man. Bespoke comes from the term spoken for. Then this is when you walked in, you chose the fabric, they cut the fabric, and then over a period of weeks, sometimes even months, they would actually build the suit. Seriously, a bespoke suit can take 50 to 60 to sometimes well over 100 hours to make a single suit. While, you know, that stuff off the rack, oftentimes in a matter of hours. That being said, again, you can get some great deals off the rack, but if you're very difficult to fit, like this gentleman, not only does he have that little bit of curvature, but he's thin, we may want to look at a hybrid, and that is made to measure, also called custom. Made to measure isn't, they don't make every single piece for the individual, but they do actually bring different pieces together. So, they can actually make something that's going to have a little bit higher armholes, which would be great for him because he's thin. They'll have slimmer sleeves. So, that again is going to work with his slimmer build. The overall design of it is going to be made for the slimmer individual. Made to measure, if you can imagine, that's where they take all these pieces and they can create oh, what, thousands and thousands of outcomes. And oftentimes, you're going to get a more precise fit than you could ever get with off the rack. That being said, if you really want bespoke, you've got the money because that can cost thousands of dollars and you've got the time. That's the most important thing. He said that he has a few months, but sometimes getting your first bespoke suit can take at least two to three months. So, I really want to make sure that we're able to meet this time frame. I would look at made to measure or finding an off the rack that fits you extremely well that can be adjusted by a competent tailor. Now, how should a suit fit you exactly? Well, first up, if you're buying off the rack, you want to make sure it fits you as close to perfect when you're first putting it on. That means it's going to fit you right in the shoulders. It should look like this. In the torso area, it should look like this. You want to make sure the length is correct. So, it should be approximately this length. Now, if you're specifically interested in how a suit should fit, I'm going to link to a video down in the description where I go into a lot more detail along with an infographic that breaks this out 
easy to understand so you can find the perfect fitting suit or if you're getting your suit adjusted, you can get it to fit perfectly. Now let's talk about the construction of the suit. That's going to be the fabric, the materials, everything that goes into the build of the suit and the style of it. So the easiest yet hardest way to spot a well-constructed suit is to look for one with a floating canvas. Most people have no idea what this is, but a floating canvas is the bones on the inside of the chest piece. If it is sewn together in a way that allows for a bit of movement, this is one of the most expensive ways to make a suit. You don't see it on too many off the rack suits. You should see it in higher end bespoke and custom made to measure suits, but oftentimes they shortcut this. How do they do that? They glue the pieces together. I'm not saying that gluing is horrible, but I am saying in general, it's not nearly the same quality. It's come a long way, but over time, you'll often have separation of the glue, puckering. It's just not as great. Now, you will see half canvas suits, and that's going to be where they do a little bit of sewing. They do a little bit of spot gluing. I think that that is fine. It actually makes a lot of sense, but whenever you're looking at a suit and you're talking to a knowledgeable salesman, or if you're looking and you're doing research on suits and they talk about this is a half canvas, this is floating canvas, this is a full canvas. You want to pay attention to that because that right there is a great sign of quality. You can't see it though. It's on the inside of the garment, but there are other things that you can look for that indicate that they're probably going to have paid attention to the inside. The first thing is the quality of the fabric itself. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor, smash that like button. Why? Well, you know those people over at Google, they don't like Roman real style. Why? Because they don't like the way we're dressing. They think, nah, those guys are way too formal. We're going to press them down. Now, they're not oppressing us. I, it just simply helps the videos, guys, whenever you interact, whenever you leave comments, whenever you like or maybe dislike if you don't like the video. Point is, is interact. Let me know that you guys are out there. So, how do you determine high quality fabric? Well, unfortunately, you can't look at the super numbers. I know some people say, oh, it's a super 220, therefore, it should be really high quality. Not exactly. That information, those numbers are not regulated. So, one company's super 220 could be another company's super 120. And it is something, it's confusing. I admit this, and every company does it differently. What I would highly recommend is look to the older mills. So, companies like Xenia, VBC, Vitaly Barberis Conoco, Reda, all of these companies, you want to look for the history on the mill. Look at the fabric. Oftentimes, if you look on the inside of a jacket, they will brag that it actually is coming from, oh, this is, you know, if it's a particular type of tweed, it's a Harris tweed. Why do they say that? Because those particular fabrics are sought after. They're very high quality and they're expensive. And that's key because to make a suit, it takes about three and a half meters of fabric. And if every meter of fabric, is costing them $50, $100, $200, yes, there are fabrics that are $1,000 a meter. So, the base material costs 3500 bucks. You know that that suit you're getting charged maybe like 10000 for, which I know is extremely high end. But the point is, is you know if they're spending a lot of money on the materials, they're going to take care with the build quality because the build quality, unless you've owned really nice suits, it's difficult to be able to spot that. But I do recommend go into the best men's store in your area and try on that $1,000 suit, that $2,000 sports jacket, those $500 shoes. Why? I know you may not have the money for them. You want to feel what luxury feels and looks like because it enables you when you spot it, when you see little details like you notice on those expensive sports jackets, the way that they do the inside lining, all the piping, all those little details. They never have loose threads. They actually go for a half lining or even unlined on the inside and how that's a sign of great quality. You start to speak the language. You start to see these things, the nuances. And then all of a sudden, when you see that other jacket that's an off the rack and it's on sale, normally a thousand bucks down to for some reason 200 or 150 bucks, you know to jump on that because it's an amazing deal and you were able to spot that quality and that, you know, that the small, the small details matter. So in most cases, you're going to want to forget the super number, but do pay attention. Is it 100% wool? If it is mixed in with a man-made fiber, you want to be careful. I'm not going to say that you can't find great suits that are 50% polyester, 50% wool, but I would rather always go with the luxury material wool. But when you see wool being mixed with cashmere, that's when the price is going to start to shoot up. You see wool being mixed in with linen, cotton with linen. Linen and cotton, by the way, these are going to make rougher suits. They're more summer suits. They're in general going to be more breathable. I typically like to stick with wool. 
worsted wool in particular, that's going to be the finely woven wool that gives a really nice sheen and is the type of suit that you're looking for. He said a black suit and this is something I would be careful of. Yes, black suits are predominantly the most commonly sold suits out there, but in my opinion, they're, they have a stark contrast in there. They just don't look as great in my opinion of charcoal gray. It's much more versatile or go with a dark navy. And I know this is your wedding suit. A lot of people think they need to wear a tuxedo black tie. No, you don't on your wedding day, even though it seems like everyone's pushing at the rentals and stuff. I would say go with the timeless suit. Why? Because you can use it again and again. You can get your money's worth out of this thing. You can use it as an interview suit. You can use it as you're going to attend a wedding, wedding. You need to look good. When your little girl in a few years, you know, is getting baptized, you can wear it to the baptism. Suits are incredibly versatile, but tuxedos, black tie, that stuff is more relegated in our society. And maybe you're in New York and you've got more opportunities, but the vast majority of people will only have a few opportunities in their lifetime that they can ever wear black tie. I recommend going with the suit because even if you're a master electrician or you're a plumber, your little girl's going to get married someday. Your son is going to have that graduation from the Air Force Academy and you're going to want to be there looking good, feeling great and to show him that dad can get dressed up. And that's when that suit's going to come in handy. Now, I know that may be thinking too far ahead or for some of you guys, just maybe a few years, but I do think that finding and investing in the right suit it's investment in yourself, but make sure don't go with anything super light color. Don't go with anything super bright. You don't need to go with any outlandish patterns, just simply something that's going to fit your body and something that is styled classically. So now let's talk about the style of the suit. One button, two button, three button. Are you going to go with a double breasted and then all the different options you have there? Keep it simple guys. A two button suit is what 99% of you guys should start off with. Three buttons? Well, maybe. And I think there's some great options. I think two and a half, which is basically a three button that's not made to be buttoned up at the top. The lapel rolls over a bit, is a great look. But for the vast majority of men, going with a two button is perfect. You're going to see one buttons occasionally, especially for shorter guys. You're going to see it on black tie as well. Four buttons, I think, are an, you know, yeah, they're an abomination. Don't even touch those things. Double breasted. I think if you've got seven or eight suits already and you wear suits pretty often and you understand what a double breasted is going to do for your wardrobe, go for it. Start off classic, a solid color, but double breasted is more for the guy that owns quite a few and they are a very small percentage of suits out there. Most of the time you got to have them actually custom made. Let's look at the other style options. If you're buying it off the rack, most of this is already going to be determined, but you want to make sure that you're not buying anything that doesn't have, again, incredibly excessively wide lapels, especially if you're a thin guy, you want to go for thinner lapels. You're looking in general for notch lapels. That's one style. You're going to see sometimes peak lapels on a single breasted jacket. Peak lapels originated on double breasted jackets and really that's where they belong. But I do think that it's a little bit more fashion forward. It's fun. I've got a couple single breasted jackets with peak lapels and that looks good. Shawl lapels. You're going to see this on black tie. I don't really think it looks that great on suits. You'll see it on sweaters occasionally, uh, like sweater vests or sweater jackets. I think that looks fine. You'll also see them occasionally on a double breasted, but again, in the black tie realm. Now pockets, you want to go for two flat pockets. You want to make sure it's got a breast pocket, usually over on the left side and the back of the jacket. You're going to see double vent, single vent, and sometimes no vent. No vent is more of an Italian look. I don't recommend it for most men just because it can make the suit a little bit more constricting and tight. The single vent is the cheapest vent that's manufactured. I try to avoid it because I do think it looks bad when you put your hand in your pocket. All of a sudden that back opens up. The double vent is in my opinion where it's at. It costs more and it's a sign of a higher quality made suit. Now on trousers, in general, you're going to want to avoid pleats. Go with pleats if you're a heavier guy, if you're going to wear the trousers higher. And that's where pleats are actually at home. Whenever trousers are worn at the natural waist, you're going to find this only pretty much on custom trousers because those trousers have to just be made with more material. They're overall going to be held up with suspenders. It's a different cut of build. But if you're a heavier set guy, consider it because they're incredibly comfortable and they're going to give you more freedom of movement. Now, when it comes to, I actually like the base of my trousers. I like to have, you know, a pair of, uh, what is it? Cuffs. I just like the way it looks, but I get it. Most guys don't. So if you want to have a more streamlined look, let's say you're five foot two, five foot four, you want to look a little bit taller, then make sure that you've got just a no break down there or just a very slight break down there at the bottom and you don't have any type of cuffs. And if you're a taller guy, you definitely can go for cuffs on the bottom of your trousers with a full on break. I think it looks sharp, but I know some people don't like the look in general. It's up to you and what you want. And now let's talk about the communication, AKA the function of the suit. You're getting married. 
You want to look amazing right up there with your bride and together you want to make a timeless, great looking couple that when you look at these pictures in 25 years, you're going to be proud. You're going to feel great. And that's why we're putting together this outfit. What I would recommend again is going to be a dark color. You don't have to go with black, charcoal gray, medium gray, navy blue, all of those are going to work. Really just see which one up next to your skin. If you're an older guy, I think navy works better. If you're a really young guy, 20 years old, I do think that charcoal is going to make you look a little bit more mature. Those are the small details. In general though, the function, the goal of this is to look great but not to stand out with an outlandish color. So, when you're putting together the other parts of that suit, go, you know, you can go with a light blue, you can go with a white. I wouldn't recommend anything, you know, outlandishly colored like this. That's just not going to work. Although, you could pick up a few of those and that's what I do like about a dark conservative suit is that you could actually, in a, in a casual setting, you could wear this shirt right here with no tie or with a solid, you know, blue tie and all of a sudden, you got an interesting look, something that, but not necessarily for your wedding. For your wedding, it's all about the contrast, the formal classic looks. So, going with the white, going with the light blue, going with a solid necktie, going with shoes. If you're going to go with blue, I do think dark brown or black can work. If you're going to go with charcoal gray or a black suit, you know, decide to go with that option, then I would definitely look at going, you want black shoes with that. With the vest, you said a great thing about the vest and I think this is a solid option. A vest really adds a lot to it and if you're going to get this suit custom made or you're going to go with made to measure, look to get a vest. You can get it with a matching color or you can go with a contrast and it will be covered most of the way by the jacket but can add a little bit of color right in there. You also mentioned bow ties. Neckties are going to be more classic but bow ties can be just and they're just as formal as any necktie. So, I mean Winston Churchill used to rock with that bow tie with little polka dots. You could pull that off with a small repeating pattern. You could go for a solid color. You could even maybe bring in a bit of color that would match maybe the, the groomsmen or work. You could work that in to the wedding colors. Have fun with it though and look at yourself in the mirror. Put it on and just make sure though if you go with a bow tie or a necktie to tie it yourself. Now, how to make this happen? Good, cheap and fast, right? Well, here's the decision pyramid. Now, I stole this from a sign I saw years ago but these are the three types of service you can expect in the clothing industry when it comes to getting a good looking suit. So, you've got the pyramid here. Good, cheap and fast but here's the trick. You can only choose two. You can go with good and cheap but it won't be fast. Fast and good but it won't be cheap or cheap and fast but it won't be good. So, Peter, hopefully this helps you help your friend look great on his wedding day. And gents, if you've got questions, let me know down in the comments. We'll go down there, maybe choose a few of them and make videos of them. What video to watch next? How about the seven deadly style sins? If you are committing any of these, you are going to die. No, just, just kidding. <laughs> But, uh, but they are pretty serious. So, you should make sure that you are not committing any of these. What are they, gents? Find out in this video right here.